history net is interviewing Rob the Deflator tonight. Mr. Brass decided not to show up or he's taking a long time. Anyway, I'll be here. Uh, how are you, sir? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little pissed off. That's some way to begin the interview, yes. <laughs> I'm a little pissed off. Still getting the hang of this. So tell us about yourself. Well, well, uh, first I should tell the, the, the audience that I got uh, uh, put in Facebook jail uh, uh, about an hour ago, which made it very uncertain that this discussion was even going to take place. So yes, I will not be uh, posting anything on, on Deflating Atheism for the next week. But uh, yes, I am uh, Rob, and I have a channel called Deflating Atheism that I started more than three years ago. And uh, it's 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 there has been much going on it recently due to certain personal events, but I, I I do hope to get back to making response videos to atheists and and it's sorely needed as, as uh, experiences uh, of the last of the last few weeks have have, have shown me. Uh, I kind of thought that the atheism fad went away but they're 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 still there doing their thing and and, and posting untruths and, and and illogical arguments and sadly uh sjw atheism has made a comeback also yes yes but uh, uh honestly i've not found the uh the uh, red pill atheist uh, a, a whole lot more endearing yeah just so we're clear you're against new atheists slash anti-theists not normal atheists who would otherwise want to live and let live right Oh, well, that's that's the thing. Uh, uh, I'm sure there are atheists out there who, who just take a look at the world and says maybe it just seems to apparent to me that there is no God, and then they place their hands in their lap and in their easy chair, and then that's it. That's the end of it. Uh, those aren't the atheists we're hearing about, uh, uh, kind of through through that selection bias. It's the aggressive evangelical atheists that uh, right. that we see on the internet. So. Uh, I, I have to admit, oh, your 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 image went away, but uh, I have to. I'm popping it out. I I do kind of uh, take the kind of big ball of wax view of atheism, where where a lot of times I will assume erroneously, and I'm, I'm aware I do this, that all atheists are materialists, that all atheists are scientismists. Yo, know, I, I I will, for the sake of uh, economy of speech. <laughs> I will make these assumptions because that is how these uh, aggressive evangelical atheists themselves talk about, you know, characterize atheists. So I'll, I'll use their definitions and their, their terms when making my own arguments, even though I am aware that does not characterize every atheist. Right. There's, there are good ones out there like, um, <clears throat> like Cyrus and them. Cyrus, yes. Yes. Like, um, Okay, so uh, how did you find God? And I heard you mention you're a Catholic. Yes, yes. I I didn't find God. Uh, uh, I was I was never an atheist, and that's that's kind of the thing. It's because every everyone seems to have this dramatic story. I don't have a dramatic story. I'm I'm, I'm a guy who who uh, you know starting like ten years back, or maybe more than ten years back, but especially like five years ago or so, I, I started really getting pissed off by the atheists who were who are shitting up my, my my internet experience. It's like it's like yeah. you know, they're I have my cozy little you know curated internet experience and here they are assing it up. <clears throat> that got me angry so I started responding. Now I was really late I was really late uh, in creating the channel. I should have done it at least like 18 months sooner. But who who knows it might be as current as ever. Uh, with these new uh, aggressively dumb and annoying atheists. Like, I haven't really... Like, I've been throughout the internet for so, quite some time, but it, they just... The atheists, the militant atheists, we should yeah. stress, they find you. And I came across them, like, in 2012. <clears throat> but I've I've dealt with atheists here and there for, like, uh, for as long as the movement's been alive, but not to that much, that extreme. Uh, yeah. I've been sucked into this ever since. 
Well, it, it sounds kind of like me. Uh, uh, it seemed to me that atheists were the literal bottom feeders of the internet because whenever you would have any article on any like news magazine, news magazine website about anything pertaining to religion, if you went down into the comments beneath the article, it was always the same atheist saying the same things about invisible sky fairies and you, you know Bronze Age fairy tales, and mm -hmm. he wrote. And, and, and so hackneyed, and and it just got very, very irritating to me. And I, at the same time, I think maybe for people who don't know a lot, even even though those are not arguments in in themselves, even though saying you know Bronze Age fairy tales is not an argument in itself, it still might be persuasive, especially to a a very young person who is feeling like very insecure or or, or is really searching for some you know, need to uh, uh, ground their self-esteem in something. So, and, oh, rec and recovering from the jellicles. Yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, there's a, there's an there's an ex-Jehovah's uh, uh, Witness on my friends list who, who I think is is getting into agnosticism and stuff. It's, uh, is it uh, Telltale Morgan? No, you you wouldn't know him. But, uh, but uh, it, it, it's really unfortunate because, yeah, these... The, there, there are these religious sects that are, are not good in and of themselves. I mean, I, you could say like Scientology is another thing like that. But uh, then when they uh, uh, stop being in that sect, and a lot of them have, have kind of cultic uh, uh, kind of aspects to them, then they, they go straight into atheism, which has kind of cultic aspects of its own. Yeah, the, the new atheists, uh, anti-theists especially. Yeah. I don't feel the need to qualify everything I say because my ethos has always been that that kind of pissing people off and kind of just being a bee in their bonnet uh, has value uh, in its own right. So I, I'm not I'm not gonna walk on eggshells and, and, and like uh, uh, do the uh, what's it the Steve McRae thing where they have like you know the 57 different genders and it's like a a time based agnostic or something and it's like oh wow you you guys are so interesting you have like 57 different flavors of atheists and you get you get to expound on which type of atheist you are it's like do you believe God exists yes no or maybe <laughs> I think there's really only three answers to that question. Yeah, but to be to be fair, he does shit on atheists a lot, and for good reason. Like because they would say atheism is just like a belief, even th even though virtually no academic I says that's the definition of it. It's atheism has always been the belief that there is no god. Yes. that's it. Agnosticism would be the lack of belief. Yes, I, I, and and oh. if you define atheism as a lack of belief, it, it's just it's completely useless. You can't argue on behalf of a lack of belief. It's complete nonsensical. So you like an intellectual position. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a mental state. Yeah. So how did you get caught up in all this mess? Uh, take us back to the beginning. Well, like I said, I, I mean, I had, I had, uh, I like I said, I was getting upset, and and I was firing off these missives you know, usually in Facebook comments and stuff. And I'll write like two paragraphs or something. And it never occurred to me. And, and I was also, my, my voice is going because I've been, I've been talking to a lot of people today. But, uh, but uh, it never really occurred to me to start a channel of my own, even though I was, even though I was, I was aware of uh, some like atheists and, and Christian channels at the time, which I watched. Uh, but like mostly, I was like watching like Trisha Paytas videos or something. Uh, for some reason, I just got really involved in that, and then it kind of clicked for me that I could start a, a YouTube channel of my own. But yeah, I also had some some bad, uh, actually, real life experiences with atheists that kind of uh, uh, lit a fire under me. Tell us, tell us about that if you want to. Well, yes, uh, uh, one experience. I, I have I have a clear experience of uh, uh, I mean a clear remembrance of what is I was actually at a bar and and uh, for some reason this guy this guy uh, uh, started got on the subject of of religion he was an atheist but he he seemed reasonable enough and willing to discuss and so I, I kind of went back and forth with him and then he had to go somewhere and this other guy 
sat right up next to me and he just pulled up his chair behind me and and he like started he started like you know uh, uh doing the script almost throwing these questions uh at me and i had you know answers to all his questions but the kind of rat-a-tat nature of how he was delivering these questions uh made me believe that he was somehow indoctrinated in this now I'm sorry. Street epistemologists, those low integrity uh, street preachers for atheism. Yeah, well, this was like four years ago. This is like pre street epistemology. And, and, and I don't think this guy was even that uh, uh, like aware or, or studied in anything. It's just maybe maybe uh, his professor, because I, I, I live in a college town. And also, uh, I live in a, this is what was unusual about it, which is I live in a town where there are a lot of expatriate Africans. Not African Americans, Africans, people who are like from the Congo or Nigeria who, who live in my town. Normally, of course, they're they're uh, uh, Christian or, or, or Muslim. For some reason, this guy was an atheist, which I, I thought was very unusual. But but how completely rigid and doctrinaire and scripted his questions were. It's like so so yo uh, uh, you you believe God and no evidence, and you like go to another thing. You only believe in God because your parents are. And it was just one thing after another. And that was extremely upsetting to me. But I, I answered all his questions uh, uh, without even giving it a second thought because it was, just all, it was all so substanceless. But like when I was going back over it in my head, I started thinking, man, you know, I would have used a lot harsher words because you know me, I, I get very... Uh, I, I kind of fly off the handle sometimes. Yeah, you yeah, just do that to people who play that cringeworthy condescension act on you. Yeah, yeah, but like I, I kept going in my mind that like, oh man, I would have called him stupid. I would have called him illiterate. I, I would have said just read an effing book or something. And so that was like what I was thinking like after the fact. But maybe it's for the best that but if, I, if they I, come in, if, if they come in good if they come in good faith, just answer them accordingly. Other than that, let them have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say I'm not. I'm not. I, I I will admit I have problems with anger. I have problems with rage. I have problems with flying off the handle, which is why I don't think I'm very good with 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 these one on one interactions. And it's probably best that I I, I keep my you know uh, communications with atheists through through like YouTube videos rather than you know sort of one on one inter interactions. What other experiences have you had with them? Uh. There were there was there was a, a, another uh, uh, oh yes yes uh, I remember what it was uh, do you know the uh, the the web comic the oatmeal no okay well you you would recognize it if you saw the guy's style it's 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 a, a guy named Matthew Inman who does a, a a cartoon called the the oatmeal and he uh he published some anti theistic cartoons and I responded. And uh, he like he messaged me, which was very odd. It's very odd because this this is like a a very well known cartoonist. So he he, he responded to my message, and uh, I was we had a back and forth. I didn't think much of it, but then uh, he posted the the exchange, the the uh, Facebook message exchange on Imager, where it got. Half a million views in 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 about twenty four hours, so that was that was actually my my only experience with viral fame was actually before I even created a, a, a deflating atheism. I would love to I would love to have something that gets a half a million views in in in, in twenty four hours now. But yeah, that, then I went through all the comments and started responding to them. And again, uh, it it was the clown car. They were all tagging yeah. all their friends they all descended at once they were all sending out their bath signals and they all responded with the same talking points and it was very alarming because all these people there were literally like in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments there were literally like two people who were not atheists and they they all swarmed in reciting the same talking points there is no evidence for god blah 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 or I, I wasted my time responding to them but it's scary that uniformity of thought, that 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 herd mentality, mm -hmm. and, and where they all just they all just uh, they all just you know gang together and, and attack a target. It, it, it's very scary.
that's a common groupthink tactic. Like when their favorite atheist YouTuber responds to somebody, they collectively rush immediately to the original videos and smash the dislike button. Yes, exactly. And, le and leave drive-by comments, by often vile comments saying the same shit that the, the guy who responded to you said. Yes, yes. And they never respond with arguments. They, they, they always respond with insults and, and superficial remarks and drive-by comments. But some of, some of those YouTube atheists have fan bases that are worse than others. That's what I was like telling you before. Yeah. It's, it's always hard to... to to discern who's worse. There, there's the atheist experience who are full of low IQ village atheist automatons, and there's Aaron Ra's followers, and then there's yeah, followers yeah. of other, even nice atheists, like Cosmic Skeptic has vile uh, audience. Yeah, but there are, there are some are worse than others. I actually, I always kind of thought Aaron Ra was part of the atheist experience. I don't know. Maybe. He was. He, he, was uh, he was one of Dill Hunting's lap dogs. Okay, okay. Before he went, before he went solo, and <laughs> guy got slapped around by inspiring philosophy. Oh yeah, twice at least. I, I I know of at least two uh two uh debates where he got slapped around by IP. Yeah, maybe <laughs> there are more. I don't know, but uh uh yeah, but some of them are worse for uh, than others. I I really think the ones who appeal to very young people who are very insecure and very much looking for a sense of belonging. Those yeah. are the ones with the most aggressive uh, uh, fan bases, where they and, get and, and who come from uh, often come from fundangelical households with that fire and brimstone upbringing. Who, who, often, who often come from uh, uh, yeah uh, fundamentalist or, or or Jehovah's Witness or something like that. Uh, I, I think I think that that you know may, maybe that can get overstated a little bit because I mean I mean. I, I, I've had more than enough uh, dumb, aggressive atheists who come from the uh, supposedly uh, secular utopia of Sweden. They're not; they don't seem to be any better than than the uh, American atheists. But yeah, I haven't known any that were that vile. But we've interviewed a woman from there, and it's not all. It's not all as they they present it, as Western atheists present it. Exactly, it's, exactly. Yeah, they even have a state church, and there's a lot of Christians over there. A lot over there, and. It's yeah. it's not a secular paradise by any means. I agreed, agreed, yeah. And there's um so like uh how do you feel after dealing with militant atheists all that time? Like has it taken a toll on your spirit? Yes. It takes it, it, it's a continuous weight on my soul. I I, I have to be honest. And it's 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 ugliness that you just don't want to have to deal with. But I, I can't not do it because, because I, I, I mean, that would be its own uh, uh, weight on my soul. Uh, uh, what, what, what's the, uh, what's the uh, uh, I think the Franz Kafka quote is that you can, you, you can hold yourself back from the, uh, from, the, from the tragedies of the world, but that holding back might be the one tragedy you could avoid, you know. Uh, I'm misquoting that, I know, but, but – uh, yeah, that would be a weight on my soul to to bottle it all up. So in a way, I'm, I almost feel like I, I'm just following my own pleasure principle by 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 doing this channel because it it, it would really be oppressive to me if I, if I could not say anything back to, to to these atheists. Like you mentioned a while back, that <clears throat> you've come across such atheists on the internet since the '90s. Yeah, well, I was, I was, uh, I was doing the uh, Usenet thing uh, back in the '90s, and I remember there was a there was a, a, a Usenet group called All Atheism, and you could really see new atheism in embryo. This was, of course, at least five years before, before you know Richard Dawkins became a celebrity or something, and they had alt atheism, and then they would. Like their, their quotes where they where they totally pun Christians or something, and they would make, put that in their signature file. So it's like the atheist quote of the week. We totally punned those those you know religious Of course, those were not the terms they used at the time, but it was the same spirit. So uh, I could definitely see uh, new atheism did not begin in two thousand four or two thousand five or whatever. It, yeah. it, it was there in the internet from the very beginning, but but uh, and, and, it, and it hit its uh, quote unquote golden age during the two thousand seven two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and so, and so it, 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 it was there. Maybe it was never as big as, 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 as some people seem to think, but it was never quite as small as other people seem to think either. But yeah, there, there was the same. It was the same self-congratulatory rhetoric, uh, be, being uh, uh, trafficked on on alt atheism back in nineteen ninety eight or something, as the, as there is in two thousand eight. Yeah, well, I wouldn't give to go back in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but yeah, like uh, considering the recent subscriber boom of these crappy atheist channels as of late, as well as the SJW atheist comeback, do you feel that things are getting worse? Uh, to be quite honest, I have not had my finger on the pulse of what's going on on, on, on YouTube, so I could not really uh, offer an, an, an ed educated uh, response to that. I do know that like Mr. Atheist and, and Genetically Modified Skeptic have crazy uh, subscriber counts. Uh, I don't know how, how many others there are like them. That are I don't like, know why. Their content is not really good. It, it is very middling. It is very mediocre. It is very banal. It is very hackneyed. And uh, I mean, yeah, but but I mean, uh, shit floats in the golden toilet. What can I tell you? Uh, like, who would you, um, your favorite and worst atheist YouTuber? <sighs> that that that's that's such a. I mean, again, I I don't. I'm. That's a really hard question for me to uh, answer because I, I've kind of fallen out of what's hip in atheist world. I I, I don't know what's really going on. Uh, my, my favorite, I would say, like you said, Cyrus, I, he seemed like a very, a very intelligent and reasonable guy who, who can examine his own assumptions or something or, 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 you know, his own feelings or whatever, and understand that, yeah, these are things that other people could potentially disagree about. It's not like the atheist who says, you know, there is no evidence for God and just accepts you to accept it as fact or something. He's a very reasonable guy. He's a very bright guy. Uh, he, uh, actually, I mean, I had a discussion with him. And he was actually very uh, impressive when he was talking about certain technical things. So uh, uh, I like him. I, I, I only really had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him once. Worst... Oh boy, we we are spoiled for choice. We are spoiled yeah. for choice. I mean, as far as the ones with with major subscriber counts, I like. I mean, I have to go for for the obvious, you know, bubonic dance and and, and cult of Dusty and those kinds of people. Uh, cult of Dusty is uh, he's he's dust. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, I mean. Back back in the day, I saw maybe like two or three of his videos. Now it's like I, I I get to I get to like a second in. It's like fingernails on the blackboard to me. I just can't watch it, you know. And then there's it's hard to figure out who's worse. You watch Aaron Raw, and then you say he's like, how could people be this vile? Then yeah. you go to, go to dark matter, fecal matter, twenty five, twenty five, yeah. and. and then you go to Dillahunty and watch his uh, his dumbass followers. Well, well, well. Dark Matter at least gets points for presentation. He tries to make it entertaining or something. He, he tries, but he yeah. Um, like my my seven year old nephew draws better than him. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's one of those cartoons you lose brain cells watching. Yeah. Oh, and my, my ex-Jehovah's Witness friend is now a fan of, of Dark Matter, so yeah. I can't imagine why, but... Yeah, there's there's others that you just can't decide. Yeah. By the way, this is a... Uh, this is a... Uh, La Croix I'm drinking right here, so yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cracking open a cold one. No. But yes, I'm, 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 a, I'm a total La Croix drinking hipster. But also in light of the recent schisms within the atheist community, as well as the popularity of guys like Jordan Peterson who are sticking it to the cultural Marxists, like, do you hope that things will get better? Yes, I, I expect that things will get better. Uh, there, there is really a revolt. I mean, where, where, where people are, are beginning to say, why were, why, why did we have these narratives uh, shoved down our throat for the last ten years? And uh, they, they, I, I think 
you could say what you want. You could get like conspiracy minded about whether you know new atheism is a social justice project, as as Max Kolbe says. I, I do think that there was some coordination uh, because I do think when when you see the the newspapers and stuff that promulgated this stuff uh, in in the mid two thousands, it was all the elites. It was all the educated elites who I I think I really truly believe knew better than the kind of, you know, homely scientism of, of, of Dawkins. I think they, they, were, they were throwing that in a trough to uh, feed to the peasants to, uh, yeah. soft, to, to kind of soften them up for a coming tyranny. That, that's you know what, Dawkins was the biggest atheist when the movement, pr like, exploded, and now he's just, like, he's not relevant anymore. Like, like Hitchens still has his own cult. People yeah. still worship, yeah. worship him like he's a fucking god. Yeah. Him and Harris, like Harris is the sole remaining pop atheist. Yeah, I, and and he did it by changing his message. He went kind of a little a, a little new age with it. He's he's like he's like the Marianne Williamson of, of atheism, basically. <laughs> now he tries to um, tries to have interviews with Jordan Pearson to stay relevant because he's losing his audience to him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But is that the atheist you said was the biggest one? The the biggest one of the new atheists that's still relevant. Oh, in, okay, okay. In, in, in the um in popular culture, like outside the internet. Yes, yes. I, I I mean I mean that's that's the thing. I mean I mean when you look at like you know pop culture, it's like there there really aren't many people beating the drum for atheism. That there's not like a greater percentage of people beating the drum for atheism than there than there is in like your real life. I mean, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Dillahunty, Aaron Rollins, like Dillahunty, Aaron Rollins, Seth Andrews are just are total nobodies in the real world. But yeah, yeah. In their in their, in their internet communities, they they have strong cults going on. Yeah. So so I, I mean that that is. And of and and of course, uh, Crackpot Carrier, who also has this inexplicable cult by <laughs> people who don't want who want Christianity to be as wrong as possible and. Carrier. Like, Carrier is literally homeless. He is literally a homeless man. <laughs> and, and an unemployed uh, failed academic. Yes. <laughs> who doesn't hold a university chair. So this is the guy you're going to trust your, um, you're going to wage eternity on. Yeah. Couch, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll promote uh, pseudo history for food, yes. <laughs> so we got... Uh, but thank God for guys like Tim O'Neill who are pushing back the new atheist uh, mangling of history that they've propagated for the last 15 years. Yes, yes, exactly. There, there, again, there, there are some, some reasonable uh, uh, atheists from yeah. control guard. And, and what's, what's ironic to me, and I know I, know I upset people when I say this, uh, some of the most historically aware atheists I've ever met are actually like old school Marxists, like the the actual communists, not the not the SJWs, like the actual old school Marxists, actually know how to put like atheism in context or something, and they're they're not just completely a uh, jejun when it comes to these things. When when is um when when have SJWs ever been acquainted with history? I'm sorry, was that? So when have um when have SJWs ever been acquainted with history? Oh no, no! I, I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, that's a whole discussion in and of itself. But look at the controversy over over like cultural appropriation. As like, no, we we can't appropriate because we stand in a certain power relation with this culture. Well, it's like, okay, well, that culture only had that thing because it aggressively raided another weaker culture. <laughs> so it's not. It's not like when you when you're so uh, uh you know concerned about culturally appropriating what that culture was that culture was at, at one time its own aggressor it was its own victor it was marauding through other weaker you know cultures and countries so yeah it, it's completely historically illiterate and, and it's a little paternalistic and it's a little chauvinistic because they seem to exist in a world where where white americans you know or first worlders are the only ones who, who have any agency in the world it's like everyone else in the world is just our passive subjects 
who are merely responding to what we do in the first world. And that was that was like kind of the the paternalism of kind of like the Noam Chomsky view of world events, where when 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 a person says that everything is America's fault, that is its own kind of paternalism and it's its own kind of cultural chauvinism because you're you're saying that no one else in the world even has the agency to do bad things. Also, have you heard about the coming theocracy? Tell me more. So basically, people in the government are conspiring to bring about a theocracy. Guys like Mike Pence, who are quote unquote anti science. That's that is the the uh, uh, Christian Taliban blather I remember hearing about almost fifteen years ago, and it, it was so stupid. It was so first off, Christianity does not have any program for running a state or running a country or running a government. Unlike you know something you know like Sharia law or or, or the old oh, oh oh this is Christian Sharia that's coming yeah but see that's the thing the the, the entire analogy fails because. There are no instructions in Christianity as to how to run a government. Jesus says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. So it, it completely falls on its face. But I think it was it's really hilarious. Uh, uh, I've been hearing that uh, some more recently, like when uh, when AOC went on her little rant about the uh, about the abortion bills in, in Alabama and Georgia. And she's like, oh, they're, they're trying to be theocrats. They're trying to force us into their religious views. I'm like, as a you are, you are, like, as you, are a, you who tries to force everyone to change their lives and give away all their money, you are criticizing these people for wanting to force force their beliefs on others. And like, you are aware that there pro, there's pro life atheists everywhere. They're just yeah. not as loud as those who want to kill babies. So yes, but but even by even if there were only one pro life atheist, even if there was only one guy named Dan right here, and he was the one pro life atheist in the world, that uh, uh that you know disproof by counterexample would completely explode the whole argument that that abortion is a religious issue. Uh, oh, we we've, we've interviewed one like uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean there there are a lot of Christians who are pro choice. Uh, there are a depressing number of Christians who are pro-choice. So yeah, <sighs> I'm sure. I'm sure Alyssa Milano is is Christian in some sense or something. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know. It doesn't. Oh, yeah. Go on a sex strike. Yes. Name me one. Name me one time in history that's ever worked. <laughs> yes. So oh, basically, I basically, you're gonna close your legs because you don't. We're taking the right away to. Like eliminate an inconvenience to your life. Well, it's it's not even that. It's not even that. But uh, uh, I, I I'm trying to think of a great meme I saw about the sex strike. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. All right, let's read some uh, comments in live chat for a while. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, I cannot post the the link to this discussion on deflating atheism because I am in Facebook jail. Cameron Gilchrist says Christians are under no obligation to differentiate between atheist sex. S E C T S. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because they've had schism as of as of lately. You've heard of the one where uh, rationality rules commit a thought crime, and uh, and uh, Dillahunte's organization uh, denounced him as transphobic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, the uh, rationality rules caved in later, but but he also did a half apology on it and responded. Uh, he did more videos on the subject, but yeah. And there's also a schism with the non sequitur show. Like, turns out Kyle was screwing Steve McRae over, and well, yeah, that might have been like for show or something that they were that it was all a joke or something. But that was real. Yeah. No, no, it's serious. Okay. Like Steve lost money that his daughter could fall back on. Oh, like a lot of money, like thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't I really did not know anything about that. It, originally non sequitur did have a lot of potential from the beginning and tried to be a neutral platform, but then over time the gr the group think of the the audience got to Kyle and 
started becoming more and more of an anti-Christian SJW shit show. Yeah, yeah. And because of God's Engineer's dumbass girlfriend is one of the hosts on there, and she bans people who go against the party line. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had invitation to uh, to be on there, but but Kyle, uh, I, it was very clear to me that, that something was very wrong with Kyle, and his motives were not pure. And, and that was just dealing dealing with, you know when, when you when you try to have a you're setting up a, a, a schedule. There's a little negotiation that goes back and forth, and, and it was just clear that he was just like a liar, you know. He he does have toxic resentment issues. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Christianity is the reason that that um, people look up down on him because he's gay or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's gay. Um, I mean, when your atheism is based on resentment, it's not going to be rational, you know. And, and it's so clear to me that that atheists are not looking for counter arguments you, you you can disprove you know they can say something you could say you're wrong here you're wrong here you're wrong here you're wrong here and it, it's it doesn't mean anything to them because because it's all about it's all about their feelings it's all about them feeling uh, uh self-righteous and so on bob smith says white engine is the man <laughs> that thanks but that used to be my old name but it distracted the SJ. It distracted the SJWs from any conversation, so I had to change my name as a parody of Science Net. <laughs> uh, Cameron Gilchrist says things are better now that Christians are aware of online atheists and their tactics. Yes, and I, I, go ahead. I was going to say there are there are a lot of uh, uh, Christian, like public Christian apologists, who are doing great things. With with preparing young people to meet these things because it's it's not hard to respond to to most to ninety nine percent of atheist arguments, but I, I think you know teaching kids this, especially at a young age, will inoculate them to to atheist stupid. So I think guys like Frank Turek and other. Oh, oh, speaking of Turek, uh, genetically a cloned atheist did a response to him lately by misrepresenting the hell out of him, and well, but, I, yeah. The thing about the thing about genetically cloned atheists is that he'll just lie through his teeth. He'll say, "Well, unlike unlike those stupid Christians, I don't use my ignorance as an argument. Yo, know, I need well, evidence for my beliefs. Unlike those stupid Christians, well, well half half the time he is sincere. He is it's a straw man, yeah. Well, half the time he is sincere. The other half he goes into a village atheist mindset. Yeah, but he he he's what we were talking about. He's the ex fundamentalist, and yeah. I'm, that, that the fact they use the fundamentals tells it all. But yeah, well, the, the, the funny thing the, fun, the funny thing is is that he made a vi he collaborated with a video that says that things atheists should not say, and one of them is that a religion or a Christianity in particular is a mental illness, and then he got a lot of flack from that from his uh, tribal uh, followers. Yeah. So that's another schism on the way, probably. Uh. JMD Apologetics 101 says, What up? Aaron Ra here. <laughs> uh, Cameron Gilchrist says, The atheist community has had schisms ever since I've been aware of them. Yeah. Yeah, there were some here and there. What? Revolutionaries always eat their own. So, yeah, we're. we're yeah, yeah, one, one of them almost killed the movement. That one between a Sergeant of a Cod and uh, Thomas Smith at Mifcon. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Sargon's had it out with a few people. Yeah. The thing is, he's not even one of the bad ones. At least I don't remember him. Well, Sargon was never the most vocal atheist. Uh, he, he he would make a reference to it here and there. I'm not really sure that he's ever made like atheist videos per se. Yeah, but uh, Dean would always be ups trying to respond to him all the time. And, like, why? He's not even one of the worst ones out there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Youngblood Ray 95 says, Dawkins is now the kooky granddad of atheism. <laughs> yes. 
I, I, I truly believe that. Uh, uh, I think he's really an embarrassment. I think to a lot of them, especially uh, post elevator elevator gate and that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, he, what, um, what when when you hear Dawkins speak and like what he think is like when he thinks is funny and stuff, it's just so like weird and like old fashioned and like British and stodgy. It's yeah, like. Of it's so British. Yeah. But the thing is, he's never contributed to science uh, that much in decades. And his, uh, his jump start of the, his jump starting of the new atheist movement is what got him relevant for a short time. And then he's going back to obscurity again. Yes. Yeah, so if, if he never became a professional atheist, he would, he would have been, a, a, a basically a footnote in science. He actually got more, more, uh, uh, more status as a science popularizer than as a research scientist. But even 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 his science, you know, even his popular science things like like a uh, like a uh, uh, the selfish gene, even that, yeah. is, even even for neo Darwinists, that that's grossly out of date. It, it's completely irrelevant to contemporary neo Darwinism. So, like in the Hitch and Hitchens. Uh he was a journalist for all of his life and like it was during the last uh when was it i i, I very much i very much like a lot of stuff that that uh hitchens wrote because because i used to read well i still read like vanity fair and stuff and i i very much appreciated uh some of the things he wrote but uh he was always taking on sacred cows and i mean the yeah. the, the sacred cow might have been uh you know like, some, like a mother Teresa and princess diana yeah, and, and and you know Jackie O or just anyone. <laughs> Actually, if you come to think, it's mostly women. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> women. But uh, he, he but, also he also has some things to say about Mandela back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, and uh, again, he he came from just straight up straight up Marxism. But but uh, I actually did appreciate a lot of things he said. I guess he found his ultimate kind of. You know, sacred cow to rail against at the end. Of course, God's not. A yeah, cow, and, but it was, and it was only he was only a new atheist apologist for the last six years of his life, and that's sadly that what he'll be most remembered for. Yeah, yeah. And and, and uh, atheists are hurting. I, I remember even a Christian saying at the time that so atheism is going to get a lot more boring without without Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> oh, he, he's he's done more for atheism and death than he has in life. Exactly, because because atheists are always like, oh man, if if Hitchens were still alive, he'd be totally pudding this Christian right now. Like, no, he's dead and he's not coming back. Get yeah. over it. He he was also a plagiarist. Yes, and lied about history a lot. So. Yeah. And uh, JMD Apologetics One Hundred One asks, was DA convinced by Aaron Ra's rant? Inspiring philosophy is debate. Oh, I I have not uh, watched. I have not watched the the full debate. I have Dude, to please please watch it. I think I'll upload it tomorrow. But okay, okay, <laughs> you you gotta watch it. Well, well, I I, I based on uh, what I've seen before, I, I do not expect Aaron Raw to perform well. And and uh, geez, I I, I mean, uh, inspiring philosophy is, is so good. He just he has all his sources, he has all his academic papers always lined up. And so I, I, I will I will give you a hint though, like in, inspiring. He Aaron Raw kept trying to rant from the derail from the conversation and go on the, all these other rants and gish gallop rants and inspiring philosophy just would not let them get off subject. Well, yeah, I saw the thing that, that, that uh, JMD uh, posted where somebody was asking him about the definition of faith and he, he gets wide eyed. <laughs> like a maniac. As like, he is. No, well, no, you can't show me that there's proof of God and no one in this room could show me a proof of God. Therefore I win. <laughs> You can you can tell by how emotional he gets. How much more dogmatic can you say when you're telling people that they won't be able that they, they won't be able to tell you any evidence for God, which was not even the issue. But it's like okay, you've already made up your mind. You're not willing to accept any evidence. It was so transparent that this is a man who who's fully indoctrinated. He is not he's not looking for counter arguments. He's not even he's, changing his mind. You can tell by his. His uh, rants, his how emotional get he gets. He's he's definitely a closeted misotheist. 
Yeah, well, I, I, I maybe maybe his response there was just his feeling that he was backed into a corner. He, he had a, he also had a terrible upbringing, and that colors colors his perception of religion in general. But yeah, yeah, like yeah, um, Coon says, tell him about the whole non secular show drama. We already covered that. Youngblood Ray 95 says, I don't see Christians throwing people off roofs. And it kind of worries me online when I see more Christians identifying with the alt right. I, the, uh, I, I, uh, I, I'm getting feedback here. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the alt right had, had a, a brief moment of semi prominence about three or four years ago. Uh, nowadays, they're more just a talking point for the left. I think. I, I I mean, what was it? You had like you had like Richard Spencer or something. He was like four years ago or something. He he got a little prominence, and now you know, who who are, who are the real alt right? Now it's just anyone, anyone uh, uh, who is to the to the right of Hillary Clinton now gets tarred as being alt right. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're gay or black or Asian or whatever. If 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 you have any sort of conservative views at all, they, they call you alt-right. So it, it, it's a completely meaningless term at this point. And it's used to justify censorship. Yeah. Um, John Smith says, did you see that many new atheists reject the studies showing the benefits of religion that inspiring philosophy provided in his debate against Aaron Ra? It's so predictable. Yeah. 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 Is John Smith uh, related to Bob Smith? You have a lot. You have a lot of followers with very, very <laughs> common names. <laughs> no, uh, John Smith's agnostic. <laughs> okay. Cameron Gilchrist says Adam Friended is an atheist who recognizes the utility of religion. That how could I forget to mention him earlier? I I, I, saw, I saw something from him. Uh, uh, I was not impressed, but yeah, I, I don't like I, what what I don't like and what I don't appreciate is is when atheists try to do a defense uh, or or you know a, you know a, an apology for religion where they say, well, well, you know, religion is good for making people feel good, so let let the plebes have their little delusions. You know, I, I don't like that. I throw he, it back. He doesn't he doesn't say it like that. Like he's yeah. like. He's one of those atheists for Jesus type of people. Okay, okay. Well, that that's you know, <laughs> it is and, for, and for defending religion and uh, sticking it to anti-theists, he is uh, he is officially a heretic. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, you know, he's the Arius of the atheist community. I mean, that's the so many like. It, you, I'm sure you've seen like articles in the Guardian or anything, and, and you know newspapers like that and say well you know new atheism is past its prime which which it is and, and they're they're right on that count but when you actually start reading the article it's like well well you know uh atheists don't uh gestic you know don't uh uh don't kneel at the altar of uh social justice or something they bring up elevator gate or, or richard carrier which you know it's like that's not the reason why new atheism is 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 floundering it's it's floundering because it has no sort of intellectual substance whatsoever. It's not because some of its, you know, uh, uh, thought leaders are uh, are sexist or, or, or you know obnoxious in other areas. So they have to uh, cater into the SJW politics in order to get relevant again. Yeah, yeah. Um, Young Blood Ray ninety five says, when Dave Cullen was an atheist, he was pretty religion friendly. You know who that is? Computing forever. Oh yeah, yeah. He he recently converted to Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To people who don't know, yes. Yeah, he he got a response from Sirs, but it wasn't it wasn't vile or anything like that. I wouldn't expect it would be. Yeah. No, it was just like a like I it was, it was kind of like a I'm not impressed kind of response, but I'm okay. Yeah. Anyway, um. Coon says, did you tell him about the whole rationality rules drama that happened? Yep. Cameron, <laughs> Cameron Gilchrist. Huh? It's on everyone's tongue, yes. Yeah. Cameron Gilchrist says Hitchens was a professional crank. 
outside what? of journal, outside of journalism, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing is is uh, you know, Christopher Hitchens brought some sort of cultural awareness to what he did. He had he had some sort of understanding of history and culture, which you know, uh, as opposed to most, and, of the and, and, and we're talking about recent history, like in the. Uh, shit that goes on in Africa in the eighties and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that, that that stuff too. Whereas as opposed to most, you know, new atheists who, who don't know anything that they didn't see in uh you know Grand Theft Auto or something, you know. <laughs> of course. Oh oh yeah, Gr Grand Theft Auto also has a the recent games have a on where you go on the internet and they have a website that and a parody of Dawkins and the atheist movement. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'd have to see that. I'd have to see that. It's in, it's in GTA Five. Uh, you'll find it somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I don't I don't play video games, so yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, but I have, uh, I have a lot of free time, which I which I waste in other ways. Yes. Uh, um, Young Blood Ray says, "Yeah, conservative, bureaucratic." Spirit-keel man been called Nazi. Yeah, it's a Jordan Pearson and Ben Shapiro have been labeled Nazi by a uh, Google, and their censorship is not even uh, secret anymore. Yeah, yeah. Or, or or they're like gateway drugs to Nazism, and that's 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 it. basically. I think we're living in a time of mass of mass hysteria and mass delusion, and, and I think the biggest one of the biggest delusions at least is that there are you know uh, uh nazis marauding through the streets of every american city and that we have to clamp down on free speech otherwise they're they're, they're coming to get everyone the fact is inter interesting uh, uh factoid uh, uh throw this out at people ask them how many how many members do you think the uh the country's biggest neo-nazi group has how many members do you think the country's biggest neo-nazi group <clears throat> yeah is 400 in a nation of 300 million people the biggest neo-nazi group has 400 members and yet we're censoring speech uh on the basis of those 400 people does that seem reasonable no and there's is also um i think you've also heard of the nib nifb um church that uh it's kind of like a westboro baptist mindset but they're um there are growing numbers and making you know, religion look bad, and anti-theists are capping on their. Uh, they're wanting to kill gays. Oh okay. oh, okay. Well, yeah, the the Westboro Baptist Church was was atheist absolute favorite church, even though it had what forty members, I think. Yeah, Westboro. I, I would think Westboro Baptist Church when it was most famous and stuff. They literally had forty members, but of course, atheists love using them as, as somehow being emblematic of the whole of Christianity. And uh, pick up your pants, patrol says Hitchens Razor. What a joke! You know that can be asserted without evidence. Can be dismissed yeah. without evidence. He asserted that he he asserted that without evidence, so I dismiss it without evidence. Yeah, well, atheists a atheists in general assert a lot of things without evidence. Um. Cameron Gilchrist says, "Has anyone figured out a way to interview Eve Kaninen, please?" Hmm. Well, uh, I, think, I think she wants to be anonymous because of the doxing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I maybe she doesn't even want her voice in, in in a video. No, they they claim no. She thinks that there's um, Google has a voice identifiers and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I'm sure we've been using a, a lot of trigger words all throughout this uh, discussion, honestly, yeah. Because I, I didn't even realize it until until a few months ago uh, when I posted the, uh, when I clicked the uh, closed captioning button underneath the video, I didn't understand at the time, it just generates that automatically. <laughs> like, they never told me this. So yeah, now, now obviously, uh, Google... I mean, yeah, YouTube, Alphabet, whatever, can, can examine the full text of your video without someone manually putting in the closed captioning. The Google overlords are watching. Yes, yes. 
and geez, they're 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 the the peasants are going to revolt. Uh, consider I, I, I've been put in Facebook jail, as I told you. I cannot even message anyone. I cannot even click a like button anymore for seven days. Uh, people are only going to take so much of this, but but I am dedicated uh, until they finally kick me off. I am I am going to be a thorn in their side. Yeah. Oh, we'll wait some more questions in the meantime. Uh, Mr. Brass, Mr. Brass never showed. <laughs> oh, he didn't. I guess he didn't set off his alarm. I, I and you made a joke about me getting up in time. Uh -huh. You made a joke about me uh, waking up in time. I did? Yeah, well, well maybe he did. I don't know. No. Oh. <sighs> Anything to add? Hey, I think I think that, that was a good conversation. Uh, yeah. I will I, I I will add this. I, I will be uh I will be doing a a six k uh, sub special uh, the weekend after this one, so I'll get my uh, I'll get my Facebook jail thing out of the way, and then I'll I'll start sending uh, inv you know little messages to people asking if they want to be part of it. But yeah, you're you're welcome to join. But uh, yeah, so a six k sub special. I don't I don't want it to conflict with uh, with uh, the Fourth of July weekend because. Uh, I don't. I don't want the celebration of my six thousand subscribers to overshadow the the celebration of our nation's founding. So yes. Yeah, we might as well do it after that point. Yeah. Out of out of respect for our country, I will not, I will not do it. Respect for our country. Yes. <laughs> okay, this has been History Net interviewing Rob the Deflator without Mr. Brass or yeah. anybody else. And again, so, uh, my channel is called Deflating Atheism. Just type that into the search bar. And I also have a Facebook page and also have an Instagram account. All right. Subscribe to Deflating Atheism and see you next time. See you guys. God bless. Thank you.